Now let's say a little bit about application architecture evolution. Why containers become so famous? There should be a reason for it, right? It's not that it, it became famous overnight because application wanted those containers. Now application workloads have changed drastically over time. And in fact, the applications itself have changed. So think of it this way. Um, in the early 90s or early 2000, even in the late, late 2008, 2007 and 10s, we used to have a very monotonous kind of application. Then came the smartphone revolution. After iPhone and other Android, we were seeing hardcore applications on phones, not only on desktops or laptops, on our phones also. And we have variety of web applications with the advent and maturity of social networking, online marketing, online sale, smartphone based applications, smartphone based shopping and all the other things. Applications took a huge leap forward from the early days. Initially, we used to have something called monolithic application. So basically a single application and all the features and components embedded in the same application itself. In this diagram, the outside blue box represents a single application or a single piece of code. And each of the gray square boxes represents the features or functional functionalities provided by the application. Suppose this is a retail application. So there can be multiple features like creating customers, browsing products, searching products, buying products, placing orders, etc. So in the early days or in the olden days where monolithic applications were the only way to create your software or application, your single program would have all these features embedded in it. That means your programs would have been really, really big and maintainability and maintenance, controlling, enhancement of those programs used to be really hard. Now in this online application or online retail portal, suppose there are a lot of users who are browsing your products, but users are not going into the other or using the other functionalities as they are using the browse products feature. That means number of users in brow who are browsing the products are in millions where in number of users who are creating customers or buying products or placing orders are in hundreds. So in this case, you have to scale out because you have to make sure that your application doesn't fail and you have to cater to all those users. So the only option was to scale the entire box or the entire application. In this case, the entire blue box, which is being hosted on a single server. Now to scale a single functionality, in this case, you, you need one more server. It doesn't make any sense because it's a single functionality itself. And for a single functionality, you are scaling up the entire application unnecessarily. Over the time, this application architecture changed and then came service oriented architecture and wherein you place the similar type of application components or group uh, similar type of application components together. And finally, currently you are seeing something called microservices. Microservices architecture says that you should divide your application into mul using multiple dimensions. The dimensions can be different based on your application. So in this case, for this online detail example, the dimension should be individual individual functionalities like create customer would be one dimension, browsing products would be another dimension, search product, buy product would be other dimensions. So in other applications, the dimensions might be different, but the underlying architecture should be the same, which, which means that you should demarcate or you should divide your application in such a way that individual components are segregated differently and put in different places or different resources. So in this case, if you think about it, the each individual components are put in individual servers or individual virtual machines, which I've seen so far, which is, which I've just seen in the previous example of web logic and db tier and now if you have to scale individual functionalities you can scale them separately for example place order and if you have to scale browse products and place order functionality you can do them easily without hampering the other components or other functionalities or features so in this case the program itself 
has been divided into five different components and all the five components have been placed in different boxes or different servers or different virtual machines but again virtual machines do not make much sense here because create customer can be a very small component so can we place order or buy product so buy product would be by far the 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 smallest component because if a million users browse your product or search your product only a few hundreds would buy the product so vms will also not make much sense here and now this is where containers excel and this is where containers are kind of meant, meant for microservices is the best use cases for container realization that means containers make a lot of sense when your applications are using microservices architecture that does not necessarily mean that there are no other use cases of containers but the biggest in fact one of the biggest use cases of containers is to realize and implement microservices architecture or individual application components let's take the same example of microservices and all the five different functionalities or components and place them in containers now this outside box is a single host wherein we have five different containers each container for each functionality for example create customer has a container for itself so has browse products search product buy product and place order so all of them have been placed in a single container moreover each of the containers or each of the functionalities can be written in different programming languages for for example create customer can be written in javascript or java wherein browse products and search products could have been written in python of course it, you might ask why do you do so so it might so happen that you know the browse product feature can be created more easily in python than in java for example let's say place order is, is using one of microsoft's features or one of microsoft's software so it, it would make much sense that we would place the place order functionality or we write the place order functionality using dotnet which is different than create customer or browse products or any other any other component so that that is one more advantage of of microservices that you can use different programming languages as your application need it does not necessarily mean that you have to write all your components using java or dotnet or nodejs or python for that matter each programming language has its pros and cons so just use the pros of all of the programming languages to create your application components and place them in containers which are again isolated packaged environment so it will have the operating system the application dependencies the programming language and the application itself now let's take the same example as earlier you have to scale browse products because a lot of users are coming in a lot of users are browsing products than using any other functionality so you have to, you can browse the products container individually to multiple containers in the same host you can keep on go doing that till the time it can handle all your users now you might ask what if this particular hardware or this particular host cannot hold any more containers of course you can add one more host here the scalability at the hardware le level remains the same in case of aws you'll we'll be using the usual you'll be using auto scaling group in case of azure you'll we'll be using virtual machine scale sets crux of the matter is that you can scale individual functionality or individual co component without even touching the other components so same is the case of browse product container buy product container also so if a lot of users are buying your product because you have some sale going on or people might like to buy a lot, lot of products so in that case you can scale the buy product con container also so basically it's not only one container you can scale multiple containers and as i said if number of containers are constrained by the underlying host or hardware you can always add more hardware auto scaling and scale sets are already there if you are using google cloud you'd be using something called managed instance groups now things have become really easy you can scale individual component wise and scaling is also really fast container scaling is really fast because as i said containers are very lightweight uh, they use the underlying operating systems kernel uh, with the delta and 
everything is managed by the container daemon or the docker daemon in this case starting a new container or spinning up a new container is really really fast as opposed to virtual machines